Uh, Dylan is in here. Want to let me know, Jr. Love you, but your hoodie is hideous. Yeah. Well, um, I decided to represent because I'm so excited about the firing of Tom Allen. So let's talk about it, guys. Tom Allen fired out of Indiana comes a day after. Listen, th- his buyout was set for I don't know 15 million because that's like what they came down to. I don't know why Tom Allen would go down, but whatever. I guess I guess he's a good guy. Uh, but his 20 million was like the third highest buyout in college football history and the highest in the Big Ten ever. So. <laughs> which I don't know if you want to be setting those records. That's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> but Tom Allen is out of Indiana. Do we think this was a good move? Do we think this was a bad move? I mean, generally, kind of what are our thoughts here? Um, and then let us know, do you have any candidates kind of off the top of your head that you would go to first? Zach, what are your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was I, – I felt like this was coming since the beginning of the season. He – you know, he had the COVID year, which was great. And the year before that, which was really good. And then it was just nosedive. And I I think 2021, you know, you had all this hype and you thought you were building something. And it was just like all the air got sucked out with that, with Penix's uh, injury. And since then, they just have not been competitive. Right. Um, So I, I like Tom Allen as, as, a leader. I like, I think he's a great guy. I don't think he's a, a big 10 level coach, uh, at least not a head coach. Um, in terms of replacement, I, it's hard because there's a lot of names you could like Jason candle out of Toledo is, is a hot name. You know, I've heard Justin Fry, the offensive line coach from Ohio state. Um, I, if I'm a young coach, and I'm offered the job at Indiana, I don't know if I take it. Which I hate to say that for Hoosier fans, but like I just don't think this is a good stepping stone job, especially with the infusion of programs that you're about to get. Um the guy, the honestly, the guy, and this would be controversial, is Pat Fitzgerald. And I don't know if he would do it. But I'm like, guy who can take low program to heights that no one would expect. Pat Fitzgerald did it for 17 years at Northwestern. So I don't be really controversial, but that would be my my pick if the controversy weren't anywhere near it. Uh, Purdue fan Dylan also chimed in. Obviously, I usually decide to a long time contract. Obviously, you're correct there, Dylan. Um Connor, I, I have some thoughts on the whole comparison of, you know, leading the Mac and, and going to be in a bottom feeder in the Big Ten. But uh, before we get to that, Connor, what are your thoughts on the Tom Allen firing and who do you think might be a good candidate? Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. I mean, I think you said it best when you opened it up. I think a lot of people look at Tom Allen, you know, they think he's a great guy, a great leader. Um he was a, a winner for a short period of time, but yeah, like he, like Zach was saying, we just saw a complete nosedive. Um, I think we all kind of tend to look at Indiana and see a one-sided team, much like Iowa. Um, you know, there's no defense being played there, but they always seem to have a lot of talent when it comes to receivers, skill positions, and all that. And I do think Tom Allen did bring that kind of juice to them, so they are going to miss out on that. But as far as someone I could see coming in... Um, I've been reading not a whole lot, but uh, I think a guy like Paul Chris or like a Dan Mullen, someone like a vet, That's they, they like their old guys in Indiana. So I, I think you can't make a mistake going with a Paul Chris, someone who's already led you know a legitimate team uh, in Wisconsin and would be coming from Texas. So I think that it would be a solid stepping stone or a good place to fall and end your career at if you're Paul Chris. Yeah, no, I think I think you make a good point there with somebody, and, and both of you kind of said it, with somebody who's been in the Big Ten, knows how to, you know, bring a program up and, and, and maybe not, you know, on the same level that Pat Fitzgerald did, but Paul Chris was obviously able to get Wisconsin to certain heights, winning the Big Ten East multiple times. Um, so, you know, that, that would be good as well. I think it's interesting, the thought on Jason Candle, because Jason Candle is actually my number one guy that I think Indiana needs to look at. This is the guy that it's like, 
That's the home run hire. If you hire Jason Candle, if you get him away from Toledo and over to IU, I think that's exactly what you want. Yeah, Jackson's agreeing with me here. Jason Candle will be a great hire for Indiana. Indiana can be the Iowa State of the Big Ten with that hire. Um, kind, you know, kind of. I think I think he could be better than Matt Campbell has been, but you know, I also have to reserve a little bit because Matt Campbell really did take a terrible Iowa State team to compete for Big 12 titles every now and then. Uh, so I do have to give respect to what he did. But um, I just I just think Jason Candle is the guy you want. If you don't get Jason Candle, I think it's a toss-up between somebody like Jake Dickert and Justin Fry, like you mentioned. The only thing with Justin Fry is he just doesn't have that head coaching experience like Connor talked about. Somebody like a Paul Christ or somebody like that who has a head coaching experience because I just don't know if you want to bring another guy in there who it's like, okay, well, you know, we have to give him some time. He has to learn, especially not in this new big 10. Uh, and that's also my hang up with like another guy I listed who Ryan Grubb from Washington, the offensive coordinator. Um, you know, he's a great, he, he's a great offensive coordinator. He's doing a great job over there at Washington, but I just don't know if he's ready for the offensive coordinator or the off- the head coach position over there. And then I also put on my list, I put on Twitter, uh, Antoine Randall. That would be kind of a fun thing. The wide receiver coach at, over at uh, the Lions, but there you I don't go. think that would ever happen. But how cool would that be, though? It'd get Randall L coaching at IU. That, man. that would be awesome. That'd be cool. Um, you guys have any, uh, Zach, you have any thoughts on some of the names I listed there or any uh, thoughts on what Connor said? No, I, I, I hadn't thought about Paul Chris. I, I thought that was a, a good, a good thought, Connor. I, I one thought that I hadn't I hadn't thought about, but as you were talking about Jason Candle, I think whoever you get, they've got to be someone who is willing to kind of go outside the box with the transfer portal with NIL and sell a different vision for Indiana. And it might like it has, and so I'm going back on what I said before. It might have to be a younger guy. Um, and Jason Candle might be that be that guy who can say, "Hey, we we're gonna we're gonna be a place where you can come to end your college career and make a difference." And I think if they can do that, they might have something. Um, just in in the new world of transfer portal and nil, but that's that's my only other thought there. Yeah, I mean, Jason Candle, I don't know if anybody really knows his history all that well. The dude is 65 and 33 at Toledo, which is not easy. I know they're in the MAC, but considering, you know, the offensive or the offensive, the out of conference schedule that teams like the MAC play or the teams that are in the MAC play, it's really an impressive record, especially with all that's going on there as well. Um, and then in addition to that, two and four in his bowl games. I mean, the dude started in Toledo in 2009. And we're in 2023 and he's still coaching there. So obviously he didn't start as a head coach there. He was a head coach in 2016, but he worked his way up all the way from being the tight end coach to being the head coach at Toledo. Um, so, I mean, I, I, for me, it's less about age and it's more about just the head coaching experience. Do you have experience being a head coach? Do you know how to, you know, run a program, do those kind of things? In the Big Ten Huddle, please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at 9 o'clock. So come in, check us out, get in the chat, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.